It's on now. Ah, there you go. Ah. Wow. We got this place is run by geniuses. Everywhere that you look, there's a road scholar standing. All right. Hey, thank you for coming to the Familiar Spirit Seminar. YouTubers, God bless you tonight. We got to get going here. We got a lot of stuff to. Oops, wrong date on the uh, next seminar. It's at the end of. No, that's the right date. Wrong subject. Sorry about that. Road Scholars again. All right. I'm on the radio every day here locally in the state of Arizona on 10 10 a.m., Monday, Monday through Monday. And I'm also on the radio all the time. On the internet on Omni FM. I'm also on a secular uh, internet radio station uh, at 2,300 listeners last week. So I'm not quite back to where I was before. I had 3,300 before I got sick, but we're whittling away at it again. 2,300 is fine with me. Uh, if you shop at Amazon, you can help our ministry if you. Shop at smileamazon.com. They'll pay us 1.2% of everything you buy. If you just put in our name, Hardcore Christianity. Same thing with Good Search. If you switch over from Google. Our teaching tonight is on YouTube channel number two, House of Healing AZ. Uh, you can send me an email, Mike, at hardcorechristianity.com or download this off the internet or off the uh, website. This is your self-deliberate package for Mentally ill Christians and troubled Christians. I'll be happy to send it to you. You probably won't do it, but it's not going to stop me from sending it to you. I'll send it anyway. YouTubers, you know what your job is. You got to open up a terror cell in your church and start terrorizing the devil. You just develop a little deliverance group with two or three people. And God will bless you and it'll just take off. I did it years ago over in Scottsdale. And it went great. I had more people I knew what to do with coming for help. Word of mouth just spreads all, all through the church. Hey, our donation boxes are on the doors. And uh, thank you for your help. All the bills are paid as I stand here today. Gracias to you. You can donate on the website. I made another donation to the building fund. So all the bills were paid plus the donation of the building fund last month. So thank you. Our PayPal button's working great and it gets busy. Okay, tonight's Bible study on familiar spirits, the most dangerous demons in the world. Uh, we're looking at the King James Bible. That's what I use. I modified a little bit for punctuation, but we do sell the best translation of the New Testament I've ever seen. It's this one right here, the KJ3. What they did was they took the Word of God, just translated it like whatever it says, and then they uh, let you figure it out from there. And that's the way I like it. I just want to know what it says. I don't want anybody telling me what it says. <laughs> that's why I sell that Bible. It's the only one I sell. Okay, familiar spirits, the most powerful demons in the world. The whole planet uh, is getting jobbed. It's all a massive, gigantic fraud. The devil is taking over the whole planet because he's got big plans for humanity. And he's got some choice servants in the future that are going to bring his will to fruition. In the world and the familiar spirits are the ones behind the scenes that are going to accomplish this for him and here is probably the most dangerous person in history Revelation 13 the false prophet Revelation 13 I beheld John said another beast coming out of the earth okay that's not uh, Katanos is a Greek word for a regular animal Therion is a Greek word for a dangerous animal, like a, a wolf or a lion or whatever. And that's what the beast is called, a Therion. The false prophet is also called that. And he comes out of the earth 
the beast comes out of the sea if you remember reading your book of revelation how many have ever read that four or five of you okay he had two horns like a lamb but he spoke like a dragon what's that telling you we're seeing it right now with familiar spirits they come at you with sweetness happiness love prosperity abundant life positivity positive things blessings but later on they launch an attack they set you up with the good stuff and then later on they smash you with the bad stuff that's what he's going to do he can preach like a dragon he's going to be a super powered human being and he has all the exousia authority of the first beast which was the antichrist and he caused the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He deceives them on the earth by the means of the miracles which he has the power to do in the sight of the beast. Now that Greek word didomi means uh, authority that you give to somebody for them to use. Similar to giving your car keys to your teenage son. You ever done that? You hand the keys over and you gasp and your heart flutters oh yes fear comes over you remember that and you give your daughter the keys of the car oh your body starts trembling weird weird but you're dealing me you're surrendering the authority to use that car to that person that's what that word means and that's what the devil did he gave the false prophet all of his incredible power Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast and you know the rest of the story That's an informative slide <laughs> You know the rest of the story don't you? <clears throat> yeah, the beast has all this supernatural power so human beings run to that It's in their nature it's part of how we're built. Okay? That's why Holy Ghost revivals are so popular. We're going to get one here someday. Deliverance revival. When people find the, the Holy Ghost is in some building, they will run and kill themselves to get there. <clears throat> Human beings are infatuated with people that have power. They love heroes. They love sports stars. They love they love big, strong, super-powered human beings. They love them. Well, this guy is off the hook, super-powered, and he does miracles, and he recreates a statue of the beast, an image of him. And then he supernaturally is able to make this thing talk. So people are utterly mesmerized, and he gets the planet Earth to worship the beast. And behind him and the beast, and everything that's going on in the world now are these millions of familiar spirits that are taking over the planet. And they're the ones that are going to set this whole thing up for the false prophet and the Antichrist. They are the worker bees of the kingdom of darkness. If you get involved with familiar spirits, they're involved mostly with witchcraft and the occult, as you know, or false religions, false doctrines. It's extremely dangerous to pick up familiar spirits because they eventually kill you. They usually give you a, a severe illness and they usually take over your mind. They're very intelligent and very powerful. And in the Old Testament, if you, there's a list in Deuteronomy 18 that shows you the type of uh, supernatural work familiar spirits do. It's right here in chapter 18. Divination, observing times, enchantments, Witches, charmers, consulters of familiar spirits, wizards, necromancer. What's a necromancer? Yeah, I'm talking dead people. And uh, in the Old Testament, if you had a familiar spirit, it was a capital offense. You were executed. Why is that? Well, there wasn't any deliverance back then. So if you picked up demons or witch, witchcraft spirits, there wasn't any way to get rid of them. So once you picked up the demons, 
you got executed in the new covenant if you pick up spirits that's a different story the holy ghost will be here tonight to set you free they didn't have that in the old testament so they executed him you know this story king saul right first samuel chapter 28 saul said to his ser servants find me some woman with a familiar spirit that i may go to her and inquire of her okay women most of the time majority of the time have more familiar spirits than men do. why is that women are more spiritually sensitive than men and they're more sensitive in the spirit world and uh, males are usually at a deficit why is that testosterone <laughs> Guys are jacked up. That's a medical term. <laughs> Females don't have testosterone. And uh, women, if you'll notice, are usually the backbone of every church in the United States. Have you ever noticed that? Anybody know that? If you look behind the scenes, you'll see the guys running around. But behind the scenes, actually, the, the place wouldn't run if there wasn't women there. Same thing here. Kelly runs the whole show, and so do the other gals. I show up here, trying to make, not to make a fool of myself. Then I run home. I take orders. All right, let's get off the marriage subject and get back to this. He wanted to find a woman that had a familiar spirit because most of the familiar spirits were manifesting in women. And he wants to inquire of her. Why? Because Jehovah wouldn't talk to him anymore because he was living in sin and had betrayed God. They said, hey, there's a woman with a familiar spirit at Endor. There's so many familiar spirits around now you have to advertise them. Back then, the word got out and they knew who you were. Here, you got to put up a sign. Like down here, for example, psychic or something like you got to advertise for it. because There's so many people that have familiar spirits. Uh, there they knew hey, if somebody had supernatural power that information spreads all over the place okay? and it says uh, the woman said who shall I bring up to you and he said bring me up Samuel and the king said don't be afraid what did you see and she said I saw Elohim which is the Hebrew word for gods it's a plural Hebrew word and a singular Hebrew word and they came ascending out of the earth. Well, presumably they were coming out of hell. And he said to her, what form is that familiar spirit? What form is that thing? Okay. And she said, it looks like an old man covered with a mantle. And it says Saul perceived it was Samuel. It wasn't Samuel. It was a familiar spirit impersonating Samuel, which is what happens in necromancy. Familiar spirits will impersonate dead people or dead pets and they'll pop up in your bedroom or in the corner of the bedroom or they'll pop up somewhere where you see them what's that what was that movie with bruce willis in that, where the kids said i see dead people what's that name sixth sense. what six cents six cents that was a familiar spirit movie that's uh the most uh, popular movie on familiar spirits ever made the sixth sense is the name of it right six cents yeah, the kids see it, saw dead people. Okay, but uh, once you die, you cannot come back here. You're gone. You never talk to anybody again, except people in heaven if you go there, or miserable people in hell if you go there. But you never come back here. You can't come back here. You cannot see Fido. Kitty, puppy, they're not there. If you see somebody, please stay for the altar call so we can get that fixed because that's going to kill you eventually. They're going to kill you. And then here's what really cost him his life quickly. He stooped down and bowed himself before the king of israel bowed to a familiar spirit that was a no-no 
King Saul had to go Chronicles chapter 10 Saul died For his transgression he committed against the Lord which he did not keep his commandments and he died for what? Consulting a familiar spirit Extremely extremely dangerous. They're all over our society. I'll show you Exactly where they are in just a couple of minutes here Let's check out the kingdom of darkness Which is going to eventually take over the world as you know it says in Ephesians 6 we wrestle not against flesh and blood Pale is the Greek word used for uh, Olympic wrestlers We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against archon rulers spiritual rulers powers exousia spiritual authorities uh, We wrestle against Rulers of the darkness of this age, I own age, world rulers. Cosmocrators means world rulers. And we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? Eperonius means the atmosphere surrounding the earth. And uh, spiritual wickedness, ponorea means spiritual perversion, extremely perverted spirits. Those are very prevalent here in America. You can see lust spirits everywhere. Well, these are the ones that run the lust demons. The whole system, as you know, is in a hierarchy of authority. It runs relatively smoothly. Unless somebody shows up with a terror cell or somebody's got the Holy Ghost and somebody went through deliverance and changed their lives and decided to use their faith to cause the devil nothing but trouble. We call those disciples in the Bible okay? That is your goal. I hope coming here to the deliverance center You're going to get rid of all of your spirits all of your soul wounds All of your illnesses and you're going to become a disciple and start causing the devil nothing but trouble There will be trouble When you are ready Yeah, you were never supposed to be just a learner Sitting in church learning year after year and That's a church person feed me feed me take care of me. No You were to leave Christianity and you were to become a disciple If You've been sitting around in church for 20 years You are a sick person You didn't hear me did you if you go to church too much you will become a sick person Okay, before the familiar spirits get me, let me go to the next slide. Now, Eperonius is, as I mentioned, the Greek word for heaven, but there's another Greek word. Here it is, oranas. Eperonius, oranas. This is the word used in that verse, and it's this area here, as you know, the atmosphere. Demons live in the atmosphere, and they travel through the atmosphere from place to place. We do too, but we travel on the earth walking or flying or driving they go through the atmosphere spirit beings do not Need a lift so to speak So Paul is saying hey this structure right here of The kingdom of darkness is in the atmosphere around the earth and they are controlling humanity through the atmosphere and getting into organizations people churches they infiltrators they get into your body and give you a sickness or a mental illness they take over your mind they're infiltrators spies private investigators they sneak around and they move through the atmosphere this thing up here atmosphere and this is what it looks like if you pull up these verses right here, you'll see this structure here from the top, which is Satan here at the top. And he runs the whole show. My guess is uh, Thronus and Kyriotis, that means lordships, spiritual thrones. I'm guessing those are fallen angels. I don't I don't know. That information is not provided. But anyway, whatever they are, it sucks. Here we are down at the bottom tonight facing Daimonion, that's a regular demon of different types. There's an unknown number number of types of demons. Daimon is a 
daimonian that's more powerful, some kind of ruling spirit or something, a controlling spirit. Some people call them strong men. Uh, archon or spiritual rulers, authorities. When you go up the chain, you go up the chain, more power, more authority, more devastation. Like that, okay? So the ones at the top are the ones that are ruling, I would guess, countries or towns or cities or areas or I don't know how they break it up. Those demons up there, we don't have any authority over. So <clears throat> I've had several people come to me for counseling that had their lives jacked up bad. When they got into a kooky Bible group who decided to start tearing down strongholds over cities and states. Okay? Do not get involved in that kind of crap because they'll come they'll come down looking at you. They'll come looking for you. Oh, you're jacked around me now. Those are superpowered demons up there. Okay? Jesus never cast out any of those demons in the New Testament. The only ones he focused on was these. So the demons running Phoenix, they got to be nasty boys. I never, I don't get involved in them. Because I don't have any, I don't own Phoenix. I don't have any authority over Phoenix. Uh, it's your house. You have authority over your house. That's a different story. Here at the Deliverance Center, hey, you come over here, you're in for a fight. Is this making sense? You don't have any authority over demons running Kansas, if that makes any sense. Jesus never rebuked the demons running Judea. It was always the spirits in the person. And there was always repentance involved, and renewing of the mind involved. Okay. Did Jesus? Yeah. Yes. That's how they. That's how they got it. They got. They think that includes the space and Satan and <laughs> kingdom of darkness. No, you're going to get caught. Pardon me? Hey, well, that depends on your faith. I would say yes. You know, you know, most people don't have faith to kick all the demons out of their neighborhood. Uh, see, the problem is you can't get demons out of somebody who likes their demons. Okay, so if somebody wants to keep their demons, uh, even if you do cast the demons out of them, they'll just come back and they'll get reinfected. Because they haven't repented and they haven't renewed their mind. Right? So if we could get rid of the demons running Phoenix, we would have done it already. I, I would have done it. Yeah, next one. Well, that's a good question. Now, see, that stuff's not explained. She's talking about these principalities and powers. All this up here. Uh, that's a good question. Well, uh, yeah, hundred percent. We'll get to that in a minute. All religions are, according to Apostle Paul and Corinthians, they're all demons. Mother Mary's a demon. Allah's a demon. Krishna's a demon. They're all demons. And this system here. Like I said, the familiar spirits run the whole thing. All the religions in the world, they're geniuses. Yeah. And you said that, that Satan has control of the world. Yeah. Have you? So God gave dominion to man. Yeah, but they haven't taken it. Yeah. So we actually, you know, if, if we give him. Yeah, exactly. Control. Yeah. Have you watched the news lately? Choice. Yeah, we gave it to him. Amen. He, he's overrunning the whole place. Yeah. Yeah. The, de the devil's the boss, and he took it because we gave it to him. See, if you don't take something, he'll take it. He'll take anything you let him take. 
that quickly. Are. And why don't we do it tonight? Sure. Right, but the point I'm trying to make is uh, don't start praying for demons over New Jersey. Okay, you, you live here, and you, first first thing you start with is the ones in you. Then you go to your family. See, that that's where the, Jesus never did any of that stuff. And the people that have come in to see me have been sicker than dogs. They started rebuking principalities up there, and weird stuff started happening to them. They got sick, their car blows up, they got fire. I mean, their lives turned into disasters. Who's ever praying over the demons running Las Vegas ain't praying much. <laughs> that place getting rottener by the minute. Okay. All the, these demons down here, the ones at the bottom of the thing that we have to face every day, these crappy things. Yeah, they, that means spiritual authorities. Yeah, they're, they're the one, the demons, these demons run those demons, those demons run those demons. It's a hierarchy like, like IBM. <laughs> You know, the CEO is the boss, and then, what's that? That I do not know. The Bible does not say. In the Bible, it speaks where the disciples went out, and they could cast out demons. It says, well, that only comes from fasting and prayer. Well, that's correct. Now, see, these... Uh, oh, absolutely. Those were deaf and dumb spirits in the boy, Mark chapter 7. Yeah, those those demons, they're more powerful than the other demons this demon here is more powerful than that one and that way right the manager is more powerful than janitor at your business same principle same principle in the kingdom of heaven you got the Holy Ghost at the top then you got this kind of angel that kind of angel that one this one that one Yeah, you know, Michael is over here, but this guy here is down here. It's not that they're bad. It's just everything has a rank to it. See, even the Trinity has a rank. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There's an order to it. Now that works. Yeah, that's what the guy over here was talking about neighborhood See if you have the faith for your neighborhood that's in your authority But your neighborhood in South Bronx You're in trouble You know you're that's got nothing to do with you and you're liable to draw in something That's not happy with you And if I was you I wouldn't do it based on my experience I have a question. Um, sure. If you go, if someone goes to a place where it's, you know, it's encroaching into the demons, so you know that if they go to that place and they submit themselves to go onto that property and into that place, and there are all kinds of little promoters and all kinds of little buddies all around them, and they're in there, they, can they bring it back to my home? Yo, oh, absolutely. Yeah, she said, uh, if you go into a demon-infested area, can you pick up transfer spirits and then bring them home? 100%. Absolutely. It happens all the time. Oh, they're all over the place. Halloween. Oh. Yeah, all over on Halloween. Halloween. Halloween is a demonic holiday. Don't have a cotton-picking thing to do with that. That's evil. Evil. You have the authority because that's your house. See? Yeah, but you can't cast the demons out of Clinton's house. First of all, they don't want you to cast them out. Okay? <laughs> but my point is, I don't want to belabor this thing. Anyway, now some people don't like me teaching that, and they don't agree with me, and that's okay. But when you come to see me and you're sick as a dog, 
I'm going to tell you not to do that anymore. Okay? And if you get mad at me a second time, I'm still okay with it. It's all good. <laughs> all right, false prophets. These are all familiar spirits. Jeremiah 14, the Lord said the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I did not send them. I did not command them. They prophesy to you false visions. I'll get to that in a minute. Divination. Things of nothing. Deceit of their heart. Okay. Can you, can you get that one? Yep. That's a person, that's a Christian who prays and their own will is mixed in there. You know? You go to church, you're 23 years old, you look over, oh, she's the one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now it's time to pray for her. Yes. <laughs> well, guess what, buddy? Hell's coming to breakfast and you're out. The point is that, is that, is that they, have their own will or their desires in the false vision or the event or the words people give a church. And so that's extremely risky. Why? It's backed by familiar spirits. Ezekiel 13. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel and say to them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Meaning they're mixing their desires, their interests, their motivations, their will in with their spiritual enlightenments. Hear the word of the Lord. Woe to foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and see nothing. Yeah, everybody is a spiritual being, every human being, because you have a spirit man. And that's where the Holy Spirit lives. If you are a psychic, you know, that's where, that's where demons live. And everybody is a spirit being. So everybody, to a certain degree, has spiritual powers or sensitivities. Some people are born genetically with extra sensitive spirits. I've gone over this several times before. If you're born with athletic gifts, those are genetic. If you're born with a sensitive spirit, that is also genetic. And people with sensitive spirits have a... Uh, Sensitivity to the spirit world that other kids don't have and it starts in childhood the kid knows they have something They just don't know what it is. They have a sensitivity about spiritual things and they they have a vivid dream life or they get premonition dreams Different things come to the kid uh, most kids are born with a regular spirit, which is nothing There's there's not much to it the ones that are born with a Sensitive spirit are targeted in the womb by familiar spirits and They are targeted for termination So that child uh, is hijacked at a very early age Because if somebody with a sensitive spirit gets to the Holy Spirit before the familiar spirits get them that Holy Spirit kid could turn into another You know Wigglesworth or something so the demons aren't going to allow that to happen so they're going to Send parents or relatives or abuse or trauma or spiritual things to hijack the kid and infect the child to keep them from hitting the main line, so to speak. Demons know all about you. So does the Holy Ghost. So when they look at you, they can see what kind of a Christian you are. So if a Christian walks into a room, most demons couldn't care less. If a disciple walks in the room, red flags go off without him saying anything. People who have anointings and giftings and disciples are red flagged in the spirit world. The demons fear them. Regular Christians, they laugh at because they know they have no power and they're useless and gutless. No offense. <laughs> Divination spirits party on dude Acts 16 we went to prayer and a uh, Pedeski is a f young female slave a Young girl a damps a damsel who was possessed. That's the Greek word echo and it means to 
be in the grip of something like you like you grab an orange or grab a hammer but it means to be in a firm grip like a, a grasp you know hard grip she was possessed or echo in the grip of a Puthone spirit that's a spirit of divination and that they are ones that will see your future right and so Puthone is the Greek word for Python spirits and what these demons do these familiar spirits they just wrap around you and they take over your life and that's how all witches and sorcerers and those kind of necromancers they all have these python spirits wrapped around them. I'll never forget when I was in Africa with Francis we were sitting out in the middle of a field at about 11 o'clock at night holding a deliverance service and uh, these witches were spinning around like that two three at a time and I said to the pastor there what the heck's going on with these Dancing girls. He said they're not dancing They're unwinding They're witches and So the Holy Ghost was setting them free and these Python spirits were unwrapping on them And so if you run into somebody a seance a palm readers Witchcraft any kind of thing like that predicting the future stuff like that That's what Paul ran into here with a Puthone familiar spirit Performing divination she brought her masters much game by sooth saying man to oh my means to tell somebody's fortune Oh, you're gonna marry this person He's a hunk Yeah, I already had one of those She followed Paul she cried. That's the Greek word kronzo. She kept yelling These men are servants of the Most High now here you see the great skill of familiar spirits and why they've taken over 99% of the churches They buddy up to Christianity. They love it. They like it they mingle in with Christianity they Speak things that are true and They sound true Sounds like God They're experts at and this familiar spirit was telling people the truth Paul and Barnabas and these other disciples. They are servants of the Most High God, Amen. correct? The demon was telling them that They tried that on Jesus and didn't work He said hey, you're the Holy One of God. We know who you are. You're the Son of God. You're the Messiah. You're You're it and he would tell him to shut up see <clears throat> truth only comes from God's Word Truth coming from Satan is not truth. It's a manipulation See you're only telling somebody part of the truth, but you're going to manipulate them later Okay Like your friends yeah, I notice you're sitting alone back there, sir I, You read my mind buddy and these are servants of the Most High God. See, a familiar spirits will buddy up to you. And they'll pump you up. And that's how you get all these phony TV preachers. The demons are building them up and sending them money. Because they preach what they tell them to preach. False doctrine. But it's never 100% false. We went over this two weeks ago. It's always a mixture. Truth, lies, a little leaven. Eventually leavens a whole lump The mayor spirits are experts and then she says they show us The way of salvation now. He's really playing it up That demon had no interest in getting saved and first of all he can't anyway. There's no salvation for demons. They all burn in the lake of fire Salvation is only for you The mayor spirits are very dangerous no kidding they cause uh, sleep paralysis. These demons will attack you at night. You'll wake up in the middle of the night paralyzed. You can't breathe. You can't move. You'll see one of them in the corner over there in the bedroom. And sometimes they're just looking at you. That happens a lot when you're a kid. Uh, somebody will say to me, I, 
Oh from grade this to that that thing was in my room and then it disappeared. Well, it never disappeared. It got in you it, it waits around for an opening and then it gets in you now. You're carrying it around with you You're right. It's not in your room anymore They choke you to death at night you feel this constriction sometimes um, You get messages from these spirits They give you these vivid dreams Oh boy Godly dreams. Boom. You need to marry so and so and move to Pygmy Island and win the pygmies the crime. I saw it in my dream. Wow, you have no idea how many people have been destroyed thinking a familiar spirit dream was from the Holy Ghost. You can't imagine it. It's so horrible. <coughs> They're experts at it. Uh, they'll give you all kinds of dreams. What they do is they sit down and they figure you out. They figure out what you like What interests you what motivates you? They analyze you like a counselor Or a psychiatrist They try to figure out what you are interested in They know what kind of men you like and what kind of women you like they know what kind of things make you happy They know what things you don't like and they cater those dreams to fool you. Yeah. What's your question? Oh, yeah, medications can jack you completely out with familiar spirits. Yeah. yeah, what's their diagnosis? Okay, yeah, well, that's a that's a different Bible study, but uh, his point about uh, medications. Yeah, those can really hurt you Bad you got to get exactly the right combination there uh, To get it to work to have any benefit to it and if you don't they'll it can be a gateway for more spirits But you'll start having religious dreams. They love religious dreams. They're always giving you a religious dream there It's incredible. Jesus comes to visit you the Holy Spirit comes to visit. I mean angels come in your room. Oh, it's it's incredible 99% of all those dreams are all oh, a fraud Don't ever accept them uh, Some people uh, familiar spirits like you to journal They want you to journal your dreams Two years later That's it What's that for what's a journal for confusion? You're just confusing it. You have 50 dreams there in your journal. Oh How you doing? Oh my life's a disaster Wait a minute. you started journaling four years ago and your life is currently a disaster. Hmm Hmm as they say in Bangkok something wrong There's something wrong with that journal. Okay, there's something's wrong. What do we need to do with your journal find a trash can? And throw it out Get it out of your house right now. Do not journal your dreams Be very careful with that because most of them are familiar spirits. Yeah um, There's one person I saw in a small Bible class a couple years ago. I just looked at one time and, and he was very uh, He traveled all over the world you know, and, stuff. and he told or shared that he had been to yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. No, it's which well, it's really happening, but it's a familiar spirit trip. They give you trips. Instead of LSD, you get. Really. Uh, 
<laughs> no, I would avoid trips to heaven if I were you. Yeah, no, the trips to heaven, they're almost all familiar spirits. Don't ever get sucked into that kind of crap. You walk by faith here, Amen. not by sight, friend. When you go to glory, nobody has any faith there. You're, it's unneeded. You don't need any faith because it's all there. Okay? You don't walk by feelings. You walk by faith. Okay? Now, do some people get visions and that kind of Yeah, very small number of disciples. Very, very small number get those kind of events. That's true. They're not 100%. False, but here in America, it's ninety-five percent. It's it's a hoax. Then the you said the guy has people's faces on the wall. No, he said when he's going up there seven times, uh, God has shown his people, and their their backs are to him, and they're facing the wall. And he doesn't know what that means. So oh, strange. Oh, brought up to heaven in his dream, and God was showing him that. All these people are facing the wall. Yeah, if you if they were in New York, we'd call that a lineup. Yeah. <laughs> now let's get back to this. These things are all fabrications designed to confuse you. They will confuse you. Okay. They will try to make everything seem weird. They're experts at weird. How does it work? It works simply. The Holy Spirit. Is in your spirit man familiar spirits are in your brain both of them can give you a vision your gifts and your anointing come from your spirit man and they're ministered out depending upon what your gift and anointing is familiar spirits give you words visions dreams they come from your brain into your subconscious <laughs> There it is. Amazing. They tried that on Jesus once. Satan just went. Phew! The greatest vision in history. He saw all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He said, there they are. You get them all. Bow here. Now, Jesus now falling for a familiar spirit vision. He he didn't play that Unfortunately in Christian in America play it all the time, but anyway the location is the key Familiar spirits are in your brain The Holy Spirit is in your spirit man Okay, and that's the difference ma'am Yeah, it says your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Yeah, that's going to happen. We're heading toward the end times. You're thinking right. No, most of them are. The demons read that scripture, and they're prepared for it, and they're going to start giving the people. Bunch of crappy visions and dreams. Duh. But the Holy Ghost is going to be given legitimate ones. But it's a much smaller percentage because you have all these Christians, but only a small percent are disciples. Does that make sense? So if you're seeing all these Mickey Mouse, carnal, lukewarm, gutless, useless Christians getting dreams, visions, and trips to heaven, something wrong. Disciples. Now wait a minute. That may be legitimate. You need to take a you take another look at that one. Okay, but for the most part they're fake. Okay, do not get caught up in that. Crap. It's very dangerous. Okay, what happens if you have familiar spirits? Well, eventually your body starts to fall apart. The person starts to get a series of strange illnesses that won't go away and they won't respond to medical treatment. They get these weird sicknesses that they can't get rid of. These are familiar spirit illnesses. They're very dangerous. And here's a list of them that can be caused by familiar spirit that I've seen over the years. I don't even know if you can read those, but there's all kinds of weird illnesses. Uh, none of them, virtually none of them, respond to medical care. 
and uh, they're all caused by these witchcraft spirits. Familiar spirits do all these things. They're the ones behind all of these different things. Native American religion, kundalini spirits in the church, uh, Christian legalism, uh, you name it. They love religion. They love spiritual things. They love the occult. They like churches. Uh, anything religious, they're hardcore into it. Um, you name it, they're, they're Mormonism. It's all familiar spirits. Uh, we bought this building from the Mormons. Yeah, the Holy Ghost said, hey, I don't want Mormons in there. I'm going to get you in there. All right, I'll come on. Moving them out. But anyway, Jehovah Witnesses, hardcore familiar spirits. I mean, these are superpowered demons. They're just you've got to you've got to have a almost supernatural intelligence to structure Hinduism. I mean, can you imagine how in, how could you keep track of all those gods, all those rituals, all those different processes and procedures? I mean, it's absolutely uncanny. Uh, Mormonism, my gosh, they've got books studying Mormonism. I mean, these demons are not stupid, friend. They are like off the hook smart. And they're taking over the planet. Taking over the planet. You can't come up with Islam, uh, you know, on a whim. Are you kidding me? Quran like that, all the other Hadid, all these other things. you got to be a supernatural genius to create Islam. I mean, it's deep. It's complicated. Jeez. You've got to be a supernatural being to create church denominations. Can you believe that? How in God's name can you have Lutherans, Episcopals, Methodists, the Christian church? That isn't familiar spirits? Duh. you got to be kidding me. Is that God? Oh, far, honey, far from it. Far from it. There's 18 different kinds of Pentecostals. What? Are you stupid? Somebody of God's the biggest one. We got a one news Pentecostal. Then we get a you know, there's UPC. That's God? Trust me, friends. Those are familiar spirits jacking with Pentecostals. It's all it's all a bunch of crap. Trust me on that one. That is ridiculous. Fighting over certain doctrines. That's what they do. They wrote the doctrine, then they fight over it. Yeah. Now, what you just said is very important. Familiar spirits are brilliant at mixing stuff up. That's the, but they are not mixed up. They, there's no confusion on their end. It's always on our end. You see? Shall I baptize somebody in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? Or should I just baptize in Jesus only? <laughs> Is, are you sick? No, you're not sick. These people are intelligent. They've got chucks in their heads. Familiar spirits come up with a fight over baptism. Have a big fight over it. Don't you see it? It's confusion. They're masters of confusion. Fighting. Splitting. See? 18 different Pentecostal denominations. 60 different Baptists. 60? How can you keep track? I can't even keep track of the types of Baptist organizations let alone the doctrines of 60 of them. You've got to be kidding. That's total insanity. Free will Baptists. Mm. Southern Baptists. Mm. Northern Baptists. Mm. What? All of it familiar spirits. All of it total insanity. You've got to be kidding. Me. It's a disgrace. He doesn't need a church. He's got familiar spirits running the churches. He's got your church. What does he need another church for? He's got your church. 
a bunch of weird denominations, stupid doctrines, false test. No, it never ends. But again, they're behind the whole thing. They're doing it. Okay? Now we get into the secular world. They're fantastic with people wanting to go get some help. I have, you wouldn't believe how many Christians I have had sit in my office who had gone to a, a psychic to get help. You wouldn't believe how many people come to see me. As soon as you walk in there to get help, one jumps in you. Now you're infected. Now you're in deep trouble. Now you're going to start getting mixed messages. They're going to cloud your conscience. Stuff that would have clearly been wrong to you is now fuzzy. You're going to get weird doctrines in your head. Check this out. <clears throat> They're so smart. Here's how they keep Christians in bondage. <clears throat> they put a thought in their head of a Christian. They put a thought in their mind. Click. And it's a repulsive thought or a stupid thought. And the person who receives the thought in their head, listen carefully, says to themselves, well, that, oh, my God, I just had a filthy thought. I had a crazy thought. Can you hear me, sir? I just had a nutty thought pop right in my head. I can't believe that. It's in my mind. And, and a lot of times it's a perverted thought, or it's really dumb, or it's a sacrilegious thought, or it's a critical thought, or a negative thought. And it pops right in your mind, okay? And the person goes, wait a minute, I, I don't like that thought. Then the familiar spirit puts another thought in their head and tells them, you need to repent of having that thought. That's a terrible thought. You're you're a rotten person. Well, how dare you think that thought? You just had a thought about having sex with that third grader over there. Boy, you're you're really a bad. You need to repent of that. So then the demons give them fake guilt and false shame. When in fact, it wasn't their sin at all. You can't repent. Of anybody else's sin except your own. If a demon puts a thought in your mind, that's not your sin. Who's that woman there? Your mom. Let's say he's sitting at the dinner table and the thought comes into his mind why don't you pick up that butter knife and stab your mom right in the face? They'll put that thought in the head. In fact, he's already had that thought, haven't you, sir? Uh, Sarah, hold on. I'm not done. I'm helping you, son. You talking is going to kill you. I'm helping you. He's already had those thoughts. That's why I brought that up. That thought that came into his head is not his sin. Because it wasn't his thought. Okay, you're laying in bed. It's 2 in the morning. <laughs> you get a dream so vivid, you can't believe it. I mean, you're having sex with an old girlfriend or a boyfriend. I mean, it's, I mean, it's like real, okay? It, it's so real, it wakes you up. And you're laying in bed, and then another thought comes in your head. Well, you pervert. I can't believe you're having sex dreams. You need to repent of that. You better ask God to forgive you. Go on, get out of your bed and get out. And then the person who's ignorant of how these spirits work actually repent of it. So now they've got false guilt and shame because they're repenting for things that are not their fault. It's not your sin. What would you do if I told you to do that? What would you do if I told you? Hey, I want you to go find a third grader and perform oral sex on her. What would you do? But you, wouldn't it be nice if everybody could answer their own questions like that lady? You don't receive somebody else's sin, do you? It's the same thing as, hey, would you help me rob a bank Tuesday? I'm going down here to. You would say, no, I'm not helping. Well, if I go rob the bank, it's not her sin, it's my sin. 
Well, in the spirit world, it's the same thing. If you get a thought in your head, I'd like to murder my husband. And trust me, ma'am, all wives have had it. It comes in there. Oh, yeah, with the exception of one wife. There's one lucky gal out there. She here? Karen here? Because you have a thought from a that's perverted or the a thought you don't want or don't like, that is not something for you to repent over because God is not going to forgive you because there's nothing to forgive. Amen. Jesus speaks of that. He says if it comes here, you can cast it out. When it gets here, it's already a sin. So we, we can it's not a sin. Where, where's that at, sir? Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, now hold on that one. Let me get back to my point. What? If you see it, now that's a different story. See, if I, of my own free will, look at her and say, boy, I'd like to do her, and I'm staring and lusting over her, that's my sin. If a demon puts a thought in my head, hey, why don't you do that guy's wife? And then I go ask God to forgive me, that's a waste of time. Because I don't want that thought, and I don't want to do that to her. No. To go from your mind to your heart, then it becomes your sin. Well, okay, if you, that's a way to word it. If, you, if it helps you understand it better, you can word it like that. But the point I'm trying to make is you have free will. Okay? So if the devil tells you to shoot somebody and you don't want to shoot them and that's not your thought, then it's not your sin. It's his sin. So to differentiate between the two. The way you do it, and if I no. have no desire to do that, right? That put it right. There, of course, I have that desire. Bingo, bingo, bingo. The lady just saved the seminar. <laughs> if you have a thought, a dream, a vision, whatever it is, and you don't want it, and it's not something you want, it's not your sin. They put it in there. And therefore, if you pray and ask God to forgive you, you are wasting prayers for nothing. Because he's not going to forgive you of something you didn't do. She can't go ask God to forgive her for me robbing the circle K down here. That's my sin. If I get a thought from a demon, hey, go rob the circle K. And I'm going, you know, I am a little short of money. This, yeah, I've, I've got the gun in the car. Well, now that sin transfers to me because I received a demonic thought and I acted on it. What about like if you receive that thought or that thought is put into your mind and then you constantly think about it, even though you don't want it, or do you have any desire to act upon that? Okay, now that's Second Corinthians chapter ten. You have to take the thought captive and kill it. So if she chooses to keep thinking on that thought, that's her choice. But she has the Holy Spirit in her spirit, man. She has the authority to kill that thought. But the point I'm trying to make is don't ask God to forgive you for thoughts spirits put in your mind because it's false guilt and shame. When you have false guilt and shame, your faith tanks and your prayer life caves in because you don't feel worthy of God's blessing. People who are filled with shame want to recoil. They're embarrassed. They're, they feel rejected. They don't want... That's why the demons are doing it. No, that's a bad thing. Now, here's what's happening with this poor guy. He said, I keep getting these old thoughts. Is she dead? Yeah. Your relative dies, and you, you, when you were living in sin, you trashed them. Okay? And that was a sin. 
All right, and then, then they get saved later. They go to God and they say, I trashed my mother or whoever it was. Could be anybody. And I'm sorry for that. Will you forgive me? As soon as God forgives you, what you did disappears. It doesn't exist anymore. But the demons remember what you did. So they attack this poor guy over here trying to give him false remorse when he's already been forgiven for mistreating his mother. Okay? Now, second subject, if he trashed his mother, he could have a curse on his life because your mother and your father are the two relatives, if you trash them, that brings a curse on you. Those are the only two relatives. So if she, he trashed his mother, he could have a curse on his life. So he would have, you know, weird medical problems, financial problems, relationship problems. I mean, a constant life of things going good for a while, then crashing. Good for that's a curse. That's a curse that hangs on you. Okay. So we need to get that. We could get that curse broke off of him if he trashed his mother. But the shame and guilt they're heaping on the guy that comes from demons. Yeah, the remorse. There is no remorse. Look. Once you're forgiven of your sin, it doesn't exist anymore. How can you have remorse over something you didn't do? That's right. It's forgiven. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That's that's exactly what happens. That's like a lot of work. Okay, so what we Oh, yeah. You, well, now here, let me rephrase what she said, which is a great point. Uh, uh, people collect demons. Like when I was young, I was in uh, grade school, I, I had a marble collection. And uh, in my neighborhood, we would have marble tournaments. You ever heard of that? Nobody plays marbles anymore, but. You know what a marble is? It's just a little round thing. A lot of them are pretty. Some of them are puries. Oh, they're gorgeous. Some of them are boulder puries. Oh, they were so pretty. Uh, anyway, I had, we didn't play this one. That was too sissy, where you get it in the ring. Gutless people. No, we went, we would did war marbles where you would drop the marble here, then they'd drop it, and then you'd, your move, their move, your move, and then if you hit their marble, you kept it. See, it was like, bang, got it. If I shot and missed, and it fell right next to them, then bang, they got my marble. Whoever hit the marble collected the marble. Well, I had some kind of natural familiar spirit gift of winning marbles. I could hit marbles like you wouldn't believe. It's unbelievable. And I got this giant can of marbles that big over a a few years in grade school. I was the marble king of my neighborhood. I... Oh, thanks. Now I got false shame and guilt. Now, that's exactly what human beings do with demons. Kids are, cannot sin, so the devil brings somebody along to beat that kid into the ground. Rape them, molest them, bash them, verbally abuse them. And the spirits enter the child's body from the abuser. You're no good. You're like your dad. <clears throat> and a rejection demon jumps in. As that person grows up and then they start sinning, they start collecting marbles. They start collecting spirits. Okay, but what I learned is what she just said. If you go to the more powerful spirits first, which are usually the ones you picked up first, usually. However, witchcraft's different. Okay? 
caveat there. I start there and go forward. It works wonders. I start way back as far as I can go with the person. Then, then I go forward. It works wonders. It's almost like pulling that out. You know, when you pull a chair out, somebody, boom, they drop. That's how the demons go. They start falling out. The f usually the first one. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and then it's usually easy, easier to get the rest of the spirits out. I've seen that done hundreds of times. It works then. Now the person gets well. What, but you, but there's a lot of marbles in my can. I had a whole can of them. You know, geez. Some people have a whole can of spirits. Okay? So it takes longer to get them out. And then the, the caveat is familiar spirits. Witchcraft demons will throw the thing into a tizzy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, journaling. Yeah, throw them in the trash. Why is he doing it? Why is he doing it? Why? Is he any better? Oh, okay. Yeah. Normally that stuff doesn't work. If you were to journal God's holy word and then go back and read it, bang, you're going to get the devil in trouble. He won't like that. Journaling your own dysfunctional, insane, deranged life. Who cares? Throw it out. These are familiar spirits, mediums. These are familiar spirits, TV shows about demons and spirits. There's some old time demons there, and you probably don't recognize them They're from my childhood. There's, uh, these are familiar spirits. Uh, Moon's dead. I think the Dalai Lama is still alive. Uh, Miranda of Florida, he's dead. Uh, Travassar, he's, I think he's still in prison for child, child abuse. Uh, Alamo, he just recently died. Few years ago, uh, oh geez, he was in the 70s. He was in prison. Uh, he went there for child molest. He ran the uh, what was the name of that cult? Children. Uh, geez, sorry. Anyway, there's Jones. He's dead, obviously. Guyana. These are all familiar spirits. Uh, these two guys are dead. They had a cult. They're all dead. Uh, familiar spirits. Okay. Uh, Jeff's, I believe, still alive. I think he's in prison. Once again, child child sex stuff. <clears throat> a Farrakhan still running around rant, ranting and raving about Jews. He hates them. Familiar spirits. Buddhism. Wicca. Witchcraft. Uh, familiar spirits. Hinduism. Kachina dolls. Familiar spirits. Uh, Islam. Mother Mary. Familiar spirits. They are the ones behind all these things. Messianic Jew Judaism. Now, this is a touchy area. Unfortunately, I'm starting to get a lot more referrals from poor people involved in Messianic Judaism. <clears throat> Most of that stuff's okay. Unfortunately, they're starting to try and get Christians to start doing Jewish stuff. And Judaism is a familiar spirit religion. It has been replaced by Christianity in the New Testament there was a massive fight over Christianity and Judaism and some experts on the subjects far greater than me had a meeting over it they all got together and had a little chit chat these are called apostles okay far as I know there are no apostles in the United States these guys were super Christian an apostle is the highest level of Christian you can be I've never seen or heard of an apostle anywhere around here 
now they had a meeting here and they said wherefore my sentence is this that we do not trouble them which from among the Gentiles have turned to God and that we write to them that they uh, they do four things one abstain from pollutions of idols two fornication three strangled things and for blood what are all four of these things related to idolatry now should you be does God want you to get a circumcision does God want you to eat a feast celebrate a holiday all this stuff was replaced by Christianity if you go back and start mingling those two religions you're going to end up with familiar spirits invading your life grace has replaced the law okay? now if you like laws and you like to party with them Christianity is your best bet there's over a thousand laws in the New Testament there was only 630 laws of Moses so if you like laws knock yourself out <coughs> No, that's the uh, only thing they told them to abstain from. They said, dump this law of Moses. Dump it. And the only laws we're giving you are these. They're all related to idolatry. They don't do those things. They These apostles told the Gentiles, so listen, the, 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 the Judaism stuff is out. We're not requiring you to keep any of that. But we do have certain restrictions in Christianity. Here's what they are. Boom. That was it. We are Gentiles. At last count. That's the Greek word ethnos. It means the nations. See? There was God's nation, Israel. And then there was all the other nations. It was a bifurcated system in Jehovah's eyes. God's nation here, Israel, which is fully restored, the second coming of Christ. Israel's coming back. If you don't like Jews, you're in a bad spot, dude. They're not going away. And then there's the rest of the nations. Ethnos, Gentiles. So they said, listen, we are telling you the Moses stuff is out. The only thing we're telling you not to do is these four things because it's been replaced that's an old covenant and it, the old covenant will be replaced by the better covenant okay the last thing you want to get involved in is Judaism because you are guilty the law was established to prove you were a sinner and the law could not save you grace and truth Came through Jesus Christ. <laughs> Under the law, you had the atonement, which in Hebrew means to cover the sin. The sin was still there, but it was only covered. Under the new covenant, the better covenant, one we're under, the sin is not there anymore. You have been justified in the eyes of God. That's the Greek word dikaiao. It means to be declared not guilty. As if you'd never done it. So that dude back there that abused his mother, he never abused her. Hello? This thing on? When you committed adultery and you came to God sincerely and repented of it, you never committed adultery. Now, you may have residuals of adultery. You might have picked up a transfer of spirit from some guy. Well, grace covers that. It's called the children's bread. Deliverance. Okay? But the sin of it is gone. Yeah. You can get your face kicked in. Yeah. Repentance means, this is a Greek word, it means to 
make an about face you're going this way see that when I was living in sin I was committing adultery cheating on my taxes making money lying and cheating cussing and do I was doing all the fun things sinners do then when I came to Christ at 40 I said hey I'm out of here that life sucked I want a new life in Christ and so I repented I went the other direction if you go back to your vomit the demons jump on you like flies and you and you're gonna get your face kicked in and it's gonna get ugly but it's not God doing it you did it and it's the devil doing it. God never hurts his children never sends you a disease never makes you sick he's trying to heal you and help you he loves us that's exactly right thank you okay they're in the New Testament true oh honey you need to start reading your Bible those are the two most important laws in the New Testament and the old that summarized the whole law remember but there's all kinds of laws in the New Testament more than in the Old Testament for example uh, fornication in the New Testament was expanded to include the imagination so if I sit around watching porn and I'm sitting in my mind doing some gal and I think I'm the king of the lovers and I'm sitting there harboring that and f masturbating over it and facilitating it. I committed adultery and I never met the gal. Okay? So in the Old Testament, fornication was only if you touched the wife, had sex with the wife. That was adultery. Now adultery can be expanded to all kinds of bad things and you never met the person. So there's all kinds of laws and I think it's a thousand and sixty in there. Okay. Okay. So anyway, don't get involved with too much with. The, now let's say you you go to a messianic church and they say, "Hey, uh, would you like to have a feast with us?" You know, and you go, "Well, God doesn't require me to have a feast, but you know what? These are good people. I'll have a feast. That's fine. You know, no big deal. You're not going to get hit with a lightning bolt. It's not a sin or anything." But as soon as you start to think, ooh, we got to keep this holy day, then that one, then this one, and that's essential in the eyes of God, you have drifted back to familiar spirits. Okay? Because none of that is required in the new covenant. Yeah. That, that seven day Adventists, they teach a whole bunch of crazy doctrines. Familiar spirits. Familiar spirits. What's that? That was the old covenant commandment. Now in the new covenant, all seven days are holy. See? Your holiness is not in the temple in the Old Testament. Now it's in you. The old temple was there. Now the new temple is this. Yeah. When he was crucified, the curtain between. <clears throat> The outer, the outer room and the most holy place was ripped in half because now we have direct contact with the most holy moment. Well, that's a good point. Now, the Old Testament, the Holy of Holies was in the right. third yeah. covering. Now, the Holy of Holies is in there. Yeah. It's your spirit, man. <laughs> All the, no. If the Old Covenant law was carried over in the New Covenant, it's still valid. Okay, so there's ten commandments, nine of them were carried over. The Sabbath wasn't. Okay. But if it's a for example, in the Old Testament, murder was a sin. That was carried over in the New Testament. Murder is still a sin. Okay. But if you have sex with your wife while she's on her period, that was an old law. Jehovah said, Thou shalt not do the wife while she's on her period. <laughs> Correct? And that that was not carried over Okay, and I'm not telling you to do it. That's none of my business what you're doing. 
Okay, but I'm just illustrating the differences. If that makes any sense. So. You're not required to keep any moons or festivals or day. Christ is your festival. He's your joy. He's your feast. He's your Sabbath. See, it's all Jesus now. See? So if you go back to Judaism, you're going to run into familiar spirits. They love that religion. Because they want to get you thinking in your mind that you've got to do something to get the love of God. No. You got the love of God when you were living in sin, pouring yourself out. He loved you while you were yet a sinner. I can't do anything to make him love me more. I can't do anything to improve God's righteousness. I have the righteousness of God in Christ in here. I threw my own righteousness in the garbage where it stays. Oh, I'm off the subject, but that's good preaching. Yeah, don't get involved with this Jewish stuff unless you're just doing it because I don't know. It's all good. Well, it's not good if you feel that uh, if you think that feast is required by God. For your spirituality, you are now in the world of familiar spirits. Okay? Because all you have in, to God is in Christ now. Okay? So, for example, we've had thousands of people uh, over the last 10 years uh, get rid of demons here over at the house healing. <clears throat> we never. Had one feast, one festival, never did one thing Jewish. We've had hundreds of people healed and never mentioned Yeshua one time. I had a guy straighten me out once. He said, Hey, listen, you're using Jesus. That's not his name. I said, I know it's not. Well, you need to be using Yeshua. I said, Dude, to all these hundreds of people got healed using in the name of Jesus. You want me to now turn it over? The guy just looked at me. I think he realized that he he had turned into a familiar spirit idiot. Look, grace covers that. See, we're in the dispensation of grace. It covers that. You said Jesus. You said Isis. You said Yahshua. Yeshua. You, or you mispronounced it. Let's say you mispronounced it. You know, let's say a new convert come in. I want to be saved by Yasusa. Okay, grace covers that. Dude, they they don't know what they're doing. The love of God covers this stuff. It's covered by grace. That's right. Okay, so you said Yasasusa. You know, you explain it to him. Hey, it's it's Yeshua, it's Jesus. Oh, okay, now I get it. The guy wasn't sinning. He just didn't know what was going on. Grace covers your sins and your mistakes because you are a very loved person. Yeah. Well, I don't want to get on that subject there, but uh, <clears throat> the point I'm trying to make is don't you can't mix the two covenants. They're not mixable. They don't mix. If you mix them, you're going to pull in bondages. And you get, yeah. Yeah, you join. You can join a group. Yeah. Are you asking me what you do after you get delivered and healed? Yeah. Well, you you repent of your sin and you're you're fine. No, you won't. If you get rid of your familiar spirits and you repent of your sin, you know you're you're going to be what. Well, if you join a church, yeah, and they teach uh, true doctrines, it's probably okay. Yeah, there's no problem. If you go join the Mormon church, yeah, we're going to have a problem. 
you're going to get reinfected. <laughs> you know, there has to be some discernment and wisdom. And, and if you hang around someone who has that, they'll, they, God will help you and provide for you. He can send you somebody to give you the information, or you watch one of my YouTube videos or something. But God's not going to just save you and then dump you out there. See you, sucker. No, heck no. When you become a child of God, you now have all the benefits of the kingdom of God. You're in. Hallelujah. She said, doesn't Satan attack you, attack you even more? Yes, because he wants you back. You know, and what happens is if you water down the gospel and you make it real easy to get saved, the demons are holding their guts laughing at you. Here's how you water down the gospel. Hey, buddy, you are massively loved by God. Oh, he just he thinks you're great. He loves you. He died for you on the cross. Oh my gosh. He wants you in his family. Listen, when you come to Christ, you can get a new life in Christ. Everything's gonna go great for you. Oh, you're gonna get blessings, prosperity, get a new car. Oh, you get a signed album from Kenneth Copeland. Oh, it's all there. There it is. The demons go, really? Is that how it works? Those people have been sitting in my office in tears for years Saying as soon as I got saved these spirits that were hiding in my body. They went dormant now are manifesting I got saved and my life went to hell in a handbasket. Everything went bad It happens all the time Why because the ministers are cheating the people they're not telling them the whole truth What's the truth? If you come to Christ, it's going to cost you everything you got. You cannot be an American Christian and survive. It's not going to work. You're going to get attacked. You have to learn spiritual warfare. You have to repent of your sins. You have to forgive. you got to get rid of your ought. You have to make major changes in your life. Christians don't want to hear that. Oh, no. You mean there's work to this? You've got to be getting. Oh, no. That's easier. Yeah, now that's a common demon. What happens is you've got your can of marbles and you got all these demons in there. You get saved here. Your spirit becomes born again, but the rest of you is not born again. So the demons hide in your body. And some of them have been dormant. Some of them are sent to go dormant in the event that they lose the person. So these demons then manifest after they get saved and steal them, steal their joy, their peace, their anointing, their faith. They plow doubt and unbelief into their minds. It works. It happens all the time. Most Christians backslide at least once. And I just told you why. But if you preach a hardcore gospel, you'll get fewer converts, but you'll have far less backsliders. Because they knew what they were getting going in. Hey, this is love, but it's also a war. Uh, how do we get on those subjects? Uh, <laughs> anyway, you know, yeah, question here. I was a long time ago when uh, a friend, uh, I was told that one saved, always saved. Yeah. Uh huh. And, and, you know, um, right to be glad and to catch the wrong one. Not to worry, you know, about my kids. My kids, um, you know, they don't, they don't do this right. And um, but that's not true, right? What no, that's familiar you? spirits. So you know, I continue praying for my children, 
Thank you. Please. Yes, well done. Like tomorrow, I'm going to have 22 with Samantha, my son. Is okay. And we, him and I, we back and forth, back and forth with him with the old man. Like back and forth with what? Because he's always telling me, don't worry, Mom, I'm going to tell her anyway. So. Yeah, now, if I was you, I'd back off your son. Because once you try to convince somebody who has demons, they'll they'll rebel against you. The only way to win that battle with her, that kid there is love. You know, they have to see Christ in you and they have to see you unconditionally love them Even though he thinks he's going to hell or he's doing this or doing that or doing this and then you have to wait for God to crack them okay? So you turn your son or daughter over to the Lord and say Lord hey I can't fix them and I help screw them up And I'm letting them go I'm giving them to you and then the Holy Ghost will move in on it. If you keep trying to fix them, he won't do anything. It'll go on forever. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't do that kind of work. Your kind of work. You can't heal anybody. Sorry. Disappointing everybody here on YouTube. All right, let's get back to familiar spirits. You know what these are. The Ouija boards are spectacular vehicles for familiar spirits. They're still around today. You wouldn't believe how many people have monkeyed around that thing and had spirits enter their body. Extremely dangerous. This is all familiar spirits, seances, Native American ceremonies, sweat lodges, jewelry from India, Hinduism, all, all that stuff draws in demons. Rosaries, Native American jewelry. Going into these temples, I would completely recommend you not do that. Too, way too risky for Christians. Uh, here's some temples here locally if you you know, there's one in Tempe you can go to or there's one in Phoenix there I wouldn't recommend you not go there another one in Phoenix Hindu temple over there uh, Islam prayer rugs those that's all familiar spirits anything they, they created all this stuff is the point I'm trying to make here I'm not recommending you do any of this stuff although I'd like to have one of those cars this thing here this is all familiar spirits. These demons are extremely powerful. Masonry spirits. Boy, they've given us nothing but trouble. Uh, spiritual books like The Shack and The Secret, all that stuff's familiar spirits. These are all familiar spirits. You've got to be a genius to write these books. Uh, the Jehovah Witnesses went through the New Testament and deliberately butchered it. The Talmud. That will not help you. The Quran, oh boy. All this stuff is the result of familiar spirits. Movies. Spiritual stuff. They love spiritual things. They love the occult. They love spiritualism. Anything like that, you can find them hovering behind whatever you're watching. These are the two most uh, popular horror movies in history. Uh, that it just surpassed the exit. When did that it come out? 2016? Well, before that, Exodus came out in 73. And that was the number one horror movie in history until just, just recently. Familiar spirits, be very careful with angels. My recommendation is you have nothing to do with them because 99% uh, of angel sightings are familiar spirits. Uh, this is a common angel that I'm told about in my interviews. Um, they can't tell what sex it is because I asked them. I said, what well, angel that visited you at home, was it a male or female? A lot of times they tell me, I don't know. Baby angels are popular with familiar spirits because they're cute. And they bring comfort. So you'll see a baby angel once in a great while. Uh, Female angels are popular with older divorced men. Uh, <laughs> hot babe angels frequently appear to teenage Christian boys. Teenage Christian boys frequently will see a hot babe angel. Uh, divorced women, lonely women very often get a buff angel pop in the bedroom or in the hallway or at the mall. These are all familiar spirits. 
You don't need an angel friend. You got the Holy Ghost. See, when you got the Holy Ghost, you're at the top. There isn't anything above that. You're at the top. See, an angel way down here. What do I need an angel for? I don't need an angel. I got the Holy Ghost. I go right to the top. Amen. Yeah. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah. She's totally, yeah. I thought you were going to say she was an angel. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to say no on that. Yeah. Uh, what brought up what? Temples. temples, yeah. Stay out of temples. So, Don't go in. Now. Oh, totally. Completely. Oh, goodness. Those are witchcraft. Familiar spirit buildings, yeah. I wouldn't do it. Nah, no, it's risky. Send me some angels, Lord. <laughs> Don't do it because familiar spirits won't send you angels. They, they like them, man. They will send you a bunch of angels. Party on, dude. They'll whip them up. They can manufacture them. They're spectacular. One guy said he saw an angel 300 feet tall, man. It's out in his yard. He went to the window and looked. It was clear up there. He's got to be difficult to fit robes for. 300 footers. <clears throat> I said, dude, that was a familiar spirit. That was not God. You're being deceived again. Yeah, it's all it's all frauds folk these people that see angels all the time. Trust me It's not oh boy. It's bad And I get it everybody wants to see something in the spirit world everybody wants to see I get it We're built that way human beings are built for spiritual things. That's correct, but there's a dark side and there's a light side Yeah Yeah, I, I would I would not do that. Not, no, that's a that's a low grade prayer. Here's a better one. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, cover my son, sweet Holy Spirit. Now you're talking. Now see now you've gone to the top with your prayer. Send me in, send Michael over there. I don't need Michael. I got Michael's way down here. I got Holy Ghost up here. Michael's busy. And by the way, angels are inferior to you. I don't know if you know that or not. Saints rule angels in the new world order. We are above angels. See? Angels don't get saved. Well, I don't know what they're doing and I don't care, but they don't get saved. They don't get washed in the blood. You did. You are a child of God, honey. My gosh. The Bible says, don't you know we will judge angels in the new world? Yeah, Paul said that. Good grief. No, I would steer completely away from angel. It's just too risky. It's too risky. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah, I didn't say 100% of angel sightings was. Well, the, well, yeah, that's you're talking about Elijah. Yeah, I get that, but uh, you have to develop discernment through your relationship, koinonia, your communion with the Holy Ghost. See, if you don't develop your relationship with God, you're not going to have any discernment. Okay, so. That tribe in Africa you're talking to, I don't know anything about them, but I'm assuming a few of those people had developed their discernment and, you know, they got protected. 
Now I didn't say all the angel sightings are of the devil. They're not but the most of them are The yeah, that's that's him that ain't you right now. We're wrestling on <laughs> Trying to get this thing done <laughs> Just because a super saint in the Bible did something doesn't mean you're gonna do it Okay <laughs> Listen, I, I I know this is the worst seminar in history. I get it but God doesn't want you to split the Red Sea or move mountains. Okay, what he wants you to do is stop yelling at your kids. He wants you to stop checking out porn and masturbating. Okay, he wants you to stop getting angry at that idiot at work. Okay, so the Holy Ghost always does things in order. Okay, moving mountains is great. <laughs> Boop. Stop yelling at her first or the husband. Or the husband. Can, Eric, can you get her help? <laughs> she meant the wife. Now, listen, <clears throat> God's not going to have you move mountains when you can't even pray for five minutes. If you can't get through two days without yielding to lust demons and looking at porn. You're not going to be sent to Africa to win souls for Christ. Duh. Duh. Brother Mike, you're deep. Yeah. Stop yelling at your neighbor over the fence and cussing him out. Okay, that comes before you hold a crusade. Stupid. You know, there's a common sense connected to the spirit world. Yes. Are, are you aware of that? I mean, it's it's there whether you're aware of it or not. <clears throat> I know this is going to be hard to believe, but I've never been this wonderful person I am now. <laughs> I haven't You know, I hate to admit this and I'm on YouTube. It's gonna be out there. I am I used to be jacked up. Well Look everybody grows at their own pace Everybody has to learn Many times the hard way. I was no exception We're all human we screw up Then we got to repent then we got to try again then we give up for a while then we come back and whine our way back Right, I done all that see I, see, I, I Get along with people okay, that's my business 37 years. I've been a counselor I'm good with people because I don't see myself superior to them. I see myself as a regular person and as a regular person I was screwed up. I had to overcome this. I had to fight through that. I did this. I failed here. I failed there. Hey, when you fail all the time, you can have compassion on other people that fail. <laughs> it's the familiar spirits that get in your head to tell you, oh, look what you've look at this position you're in now. You've really attained a masterful spot in life. Oh. Now you become this religious idiot looking down on people and then picking up. <coughs> How to get on that? I think it was your fault. <laughs> Listen, let's get to this one quickly. Familiar spirits are Holy Spirit impersonators. This is their biggest weapon for Christians. They're Holy Ghost impersonators. Now, let's learn quickly the Greek. Alos is translated in the King James Bible as another, and it means another of similar kind and quality. There's a tangerine, there's an orange. Alos. Heteros is translated as another in the King James Bible, but that means different. For example, that's an apple, that's a lemon. Those two pieces of fruit are very, very different. Okay, check it out. 1 Corinthians 11. I fear lest by any means as a serpent beguiled Eve through subtlety. What's he saying there? That's the great skill of familiar spirits. They're so smart. They trick you quietly 
gently and progressively That's how brilliant they are <clears throat> They got Eve So that your minds the Greek word is not a that was mistranslated it should have been thoughts so that your thoughts should not be corrupted the thero means to shrivel up From the simplicity that is in Christ now here's what familiar spirits do They try to complicate the gospel and make it difficult to understand see Familiar spirits are behind this gigantic Christian wave of CDs and books Everybody comes up with a new doctrine every six to eight months Why because you can't keep selling the old doctrines to these idiot Christians They want new doctrines to study see you can't sell prosperity anymore. That's an old doctrine Okay, we need we need Kingdom renovation theories now Ooh, we need transfiguration doctrines now Ooh, We need something new because that's what Americans like new things. We need new things Boop. The old rugged cross works just fine The old gospel works just fine okay? The problem with that is you can't sell any CDs and books with that one because everybody's heard that one. Okay, and you don't need it. Do you you've got your Bible you can just look it up for free Oop. I feel the hate it's fine <laughs> Shrivel away. That's what clouds do boy. They just shrivel up. They're gone tomorrow clear skies all day tomorrow Yes. First Corinthians 11 if someone comes to you preaching what? Jesus. Alos he's saying if someone preaches you another Jesus It's a fake one, but it seems like the real one See that That's like the Mormon Jesus Christ the Jehovah Witness Jesus Christ there. It's a fake Jesus But it's you know boy. There's some similarity there yeah, Mormons, yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses, they uh, they believe in the cross. Yeah, they believe in the, you know, they got these little things. Scary. The familiar spirits are impersonators. They're fakers. And then he says here, if you receive another spirit, and here's what happens. In these churches that preach false doctrines, different spirits enter the person along with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can enter the person's spirit man a, Another spirit can enter your body or your brain giving you a physical illness or a mental illness And Paul warned them you can pick up different spirits And he said you can pick up heteros a different gospel That's where you get all these crazy false teachings on TV and The demons like to complicate it because if you complicate it it seems more intelligent Yeah, oh listen There's a new doctrine out there It's the courts of heaven <laughs> I'm gonna go to the courts of heaven and get you a miracle <laughs> How do I do that? Well, I gotta buy this book to figure out how to do it. Hey, dude Your praying grandma saw all kinds of miracles. You know where her courts of heaven was? On her knees right there That don't sell any books or CDs courts of heaven sell books and CDs. Mm -hmm. This is deep see if you complicate it it seems more valuable seems more intelligent It's actually a familiar spirit making a fool out of you I marvel that you are so so removed from him that called you to a what heteros a totally different gospel. If you mix Judaism in with Christianity, you have a different gospel. That's what Paul was facing. The Jews were going around saying, oh, "Okay, you got Christ, but you've also got to circumcise." You got to keep the laws. You got to keep the Sabbath. You got to keep the peace. We got to keep this. You got to keep that.
You ever heard that phrase, keep it simple, stupid? Well, it kind of applies here. Because Paul said there's not another gospel. There isn't one. They're just perverting the words of Christ. Paul said, if an angel from heaven preach any other gospel than the one we preached, they are to be cursed and excommunicated. Anathema. That's how serious this thing is. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Years ago, I was at a mega church in Scottsdale. And the pastor over there, he was a great guy. He hired a Messianic Jew to teach Sunday school over there. I thought, well, that's interesting. I'm going to go listen to that. I'm sitting there, and he explained to us that whenever you have a bowel movement, you go in the bathroom, you can't pray. It's inappropriate and disrespectful to God for you to pray while you're grunting out a load. <laughs> and I'm sit I look over at my wife Karen. I'm looking over there, oh my god, this guy's a false teacher. We gotta get out of here. I said, I don't have the guts to tell the pastor. This was years ago, and I didn't have the guts. So I just ran out the dope. But let me tell you something, honey. If you've if you've been out, you picked up a little Montezuma's revenge. You're gonna be praying while you're on the pot, and the Holy Ghost is gonna hear you. Why? It's covered under grace. I know this sounds like rotten preaching, but it's actually pretty darn good. If you play this back, you'll go, that was good preaching. I get a miracle on the pot. <laughs> How do Christians get familiar spirits? Anybody know? They open doors to them. Okay? Demons just can't come down here, grab you, and haul you out there. They can't do that. They don't have that kind of power. They have to let you have to let them in. And how do you let them in? Well, here we go. Here's how spirits get in. I made a big long list of them. You can go back and look at it. But here's 21 ways doors get opened. I've seen Christians go to seances. Uh, they used Ouija boards when they were young. That was the beginning of the nightmare. They go to psychics, tea leaves, horoscopes, palm reading, whatever. Uh, what else? Dungeon and Dragon, different games. What else? Watching horror movies. I've had a lot of people picked up familiar spirits when they were young because they were horror movie fans. And they like to get scared. People kind of, a lot of people like to get scared. Trauma, generational curses, attending uh, false religions. You'll pick up spirits there. Uh, some of these aren't existing anymore. The Way International that closed down years ago. I think Armstrongism is gone. Branhamites, they're almost gone. We used to have some Branhamites come here. They sat right in the front. I guess it got tired of me. Unitarianism. I don't. I think that's kind of fizzled, isn't it? I think it's still around, though. Islam is booming. That will be the biggest religion in the world by the time the Armageddon uh, starts. Heaven's Gates. They're all dead. Ku Klux Klan. They've kind of fizzled. They're not really growing. Branch Davidians. I think they're all dead. Uh, Scientology's booming, and they're like Mormons. They got money you can't believe. They've got billions of dollars. They are extremely wealthy and dangerous. They treat, they teach so many false doctrines. It's scary. It is scary. Ma Masons are all over the place. Different things like that. That's how you pick up familiar spirits. Like I said before, the old stuff doesn't work anymore. So now we got to come up with new stuff. And if you ever would like some familiar spirit reading material, here you go. If you've ever heard of any of these uh, movements and these teachings, it's all just awful. Uh, yeah, the restoration of apostle and prophets, uh, third wave of the spirit, transfigurate courts. Of hell, all this stuff, somebody sat around and familiar spirits helped them make it up. And uh, all of them 
are what have elements of truth in them. all of them have truth the devil never just comes at you with everything false because he knows you won't buy it it has to be mixed with some truth or it won't work he's too smart for that okay uh, the seven mountain theory you ever heard of that one nobody well anyway uh, there's this uh, insane doctrine that Christians are going to take over the seven mountains of humanity. It's all it's all uh, it's all a crock. <clears throat> Kundalini spirits have invaded the church. It started in Toronto, Canada during the revival. A big revival hit there. There was a lot of great people running that revival. Really good people. But they had no experience with familiar spirits. They wouldn't have known one if it jumped in their face and the devil sent them these kundalini spirits which are holy spirit fakers and at this revival they had one person legitimately healed by God and then they had this person get a familiar spirit healing and they got sick later they had this person speaking in tongues and they had this one barking like a dog then they had this this one healed and then this one's rolling around like a snake and this one's howling to the moon, and this one's praising the it was a mixed bag. Okay? And kundalini spirits are extremely dangerous because they work on the human soul and they give you euphoria. And they they tell you to do good works. They're hardcore Christian works. They like them. If you're doing something good for people. Feeding the homeless, rescuing slaves, doing all those good. They're they're 100 behind it. They love it. They love giving you spiritual reputations and trips to heaven and angel visitations. And the big one is number four. They're huge on words. Everybody in the system is out giving people words. Word for this, word for that. The Lord told me. The Lord spoke to me. As soon as you hear that, watch it. That's that's the end of you. Soul laughter uh, a few years ago this holy laughter thing started sweeping around and people were laughing their guts up out of their soul acting like complete idiots There is Holy Spirit laughter that comes out of the spirit man I've used it numerous times over the years particularly on clients that have depression and it works fantastic This is soul laughter the kind of laughter you would feel if you went to a ball game Or did something Recreational. It's all familiar spirits. Music and worship now is massively infected with uh, familiar spirits. Uh, the worst one I've seen is Hillsong. That is a massive production designed to stimulate your soul so you'll feel better and you feel good. And it gives you this false sense of God quality about you until you leave and then you got to go back to your. Family, job, your miserable, stinking life. And then it all comes back to you. Then you got to go back next week and get pumped again. It's a system of continuous pumping. Pump you up, hang in there, pump you up, laser light show, pastor on a trapeze, people dancing, dancing girls, naked cowboy. They're all they're all over at Hillsong. But it's the deception is they're Helping you through your soul the Holy Spirit uses the soul secondarily. He uses the spirit man primarily That's how he operates You gotta be No, the music's great Oh, they're fantastic They got some great songs there. Well, they got uh, pros. I mean, they're they're top of the line and that's that's the the uh, trick of Christianity now Here's how it works We can get these people to come to our church, but we have to entertain them better than the other mega church Because church attendance in the United States is going down okay? As the older generation fizzles out the Millennials don't like church and they don't believe in it because they saw their pits were hypocrites the Millennials don't go to church anymore. So these mega churches like Hillsong and Mars Hill and whatever, 
they're trying to get the Millennials to come back to church and the only way to do that is to give them the entertainment they have to have Because they're doing this all day and they see everything so you need a laser light show You need trapezes you need special effects you need Spielberg <clears throat> You need fantastic music To get them in there that's not the gospel. The gospel is you preach the hardcore gospel of Christ. Right? And as the Bible says, you snatch this one out of the fire. The other ones go in. Everybody will get saved if you just give them nothing but happiness, peace, love, and prosperity and abundant life. Wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? That's not how it works. Music. No, most so much of the new gospel music is just almost like rock songs. Uh, very little of it is the blood of Christ, repentance. You know the basics of the gospel. No, a lot of it is just awful. Poetic. A lot of it's poetic. Go to exactly. No, I hadn't noticed that, but I mean, not not. There's a lot of good songs on the radio. You know, I'm just saying, watch out. This is how the familiar spirits are moving now, They're moving through. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but yeah. 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 Yeah, but she used the word all. Oh. So I, I can't go that far. Some of it is disturbing, but it's. Yeah. Yeah, but my point is not not all of it's bad. You just gotta use your discernment here, because the devil. That's the direction the devil's going. True. All right. How do these spirits transfer in church? How does it work? Here's how you transfer them. You put your hands on somebody and the Bible said do not do that first Timothy 5 Do not let somebody you don't know put their hands on you. You'll pick up a transfer I've had so many people prophetics come here for deliverance from here we, This is a prophetic hot spot here in Phoenix from reading all these guys coming in that picked up transfer spirits in these services They have what they call fire tunnels where you go in this way and everybody wants to give you a blessing So they all put their hands on you. The problem is this guy was on porn two days ago This gal went to a seance two weeks ago and repented This guy, you don't know who's putting their hands on you in them fire tunnels and they're transferring familiar spirits into these people and they don't understand it. They don't see it. Yeah. Yeah, sure, you can hold hands. Yeah, it's an impartation, it says. Well, it depends on what they're doing. Now, if they're just giving you a hug, say, hi, love you, that's fine. But I mean, if, if somebody's imparting something to you, you got to be very careful about that. It's very risky. Yeah, you can, but um, yeah, it's better not to have them do it if you don't know them. Yeah. Well, if if it's a good pastor and you know him, there's probably no problem. Yeah. If it's some guy that just pulled in from New Jersey, hey, you know, have him pray for you over here. Why does he have to put his hands on you? So don't take the risk. It's not worth it. You pick up a transfer, you're going to regret it. I mean, I've had hundreds of people come in here picking up transfers, and it's not a pretty sight. I mean, they're scared. Something's moving around their body. Something's not working right. This foot's numb. Weird stuff going on when you pick up transfers. 
strange urges come into you that you didn't have before Confusion in your mind. You didn't have before your tempers now flaring. It never used to Oh, yeah, if you sleep with somebody that has demons you can transfer the spirit over into you or transfer their sicknesses into you and suddenly their mental illness starts working on you their lusts start transferring into you I've seen both. Yeah, you can pick up demons from your spouse. Yeah, a lot of spouses are rotten. None here, but I mean at the other places, there a lot of them are rotten. Yeah. If they're not saved and you're going to have intercourse, you better get prayed up before doing it. Yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. Yes, yes. You better, yeah. No, I don't recommend divorce. If the if the couples still love each other and there's some hope for the marriage in my when I do marriage counseling, I always you know, I go that way. I try to save the thing. I try to get them both delivered, you know, and keep the thing together if I can. Yeah. But dating somebody and sleeping with them. I'm, you're you're taking risk When I was living in sin I pick up all kinds of demons from girls all kinds of demons. And if you putter around with your sexuality those demons are more powerful Okay, so you're drunk one night and you experiment with your sexuality And you do something with a gal or a guy. Oh boy. That's extremely dangerous homosexual demons lesbian demons, they're they're super powered spirits. They are very bad. All right. Okay, do not let somebody put their hands on you. And here's an example of it audio. <laughs> Never get involved in those things. Very risky. Because you don't know any of them people. You have no idea where they've been. Don't leave us to yes. our foolish thinking. Lord, we want all that you have, all, yes. all that you have. Yes. And Lord, if it blows our little minds, let them be blown. <laughs> Father, we want all of what you have, all of what you have. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> And he had a God told me to look at him and I looked at him and he had a tie on and on I don't know if he's here tonight but he'll know on the tie had a wolf howling at the moon and the Lord said to me will you howl for me I said don't ask me to do that Lord 
He said, if I ask you, will you do it? He said, if I can't ask you to do something in your own house, how are you going to do it out there? So... You know, it's all that stuff's familiar spirits. It's it's all a trick. These are very common in the prophetic movement. They have these strange jerking body motions. They're called Koreas from Hinduism. And they have uncontrollable jerks, which is the opposite of the Holy Ghost. See? The Holy Spirit comes through your spirit, man, to your free will, and you voluntarily minister your gift. Okay? The devil wants to control you with uncontrollable behaviors. So they say, they start jerking, and they give you a hoe, and that kind of thing, and it's uncontrollable. And that's a red flag. It's a familiar spirit. Yep. If you can't stop yelling at your Spouse or your kids, that's a red flag. It's a it's a demon They're control freaks Demons are control freaks And there she goes jerking her way off to probably a terminal illness That's the next thing you get when you pick up familiar spirits uh, These kind of things here if you've ever been involved in in the past you probably got familiar spirits they probably went dormant uh, visitations, dream encounters, weird stuff from the prophetic movement. This stuff's all familiar spirits. And these poor people are getting sick and they're getting confused and they better and ninety something percent of them are really good people. They really are. I've met I don't know how many of them, they're just they're good people. They love God, you know. It's the elect that gets deceived in the end. All right, let's end it there. Oops. Any final questions before we close the uh, thing? Okay, none over here. Good. None over, none over here. Good. All right. Let's let's go ahead and close in prayer. All right, Heavenly Father, I. Uh, I uh, took a lot of questions tonight, so the thing ran long. I apologize for that, but I thought it turned out okay anyway. Father God, uh, I'm asking you right now for any of my friends here tonight who were involved in the occult or spiritualism when they were younger. Before they were saved, they got involved in things that they were ignorant of. They didn't know what they were doing. And they played with the Ouija board and light as a feather and Bloody Mary and different games as a youngster. But they didn't know they were letting in familiar spirits. Father God, I'm praying for my friends here tonight who were who lived in sin for years and picked up transfer spirits from sexual sin, pornography, adultery sexual experimentation they committed sexual sins when they were drunk at a party they only did it once that's all the spirits need is once to get a transfer I pray for my friends here tonight who have had multiple marriages and they've married different people with spirits and when they married them their spirits transferred into them Lord, I'm praying right now for my friends here tonight who do not have any godly sorrow for their sin and the pain that they caused you after they became Christians. They got saved, they got filled with the Spirit, but they went back to living in sin. And you were very hurt over that. The blood of Jesus forgave them and they went backwards 
lord i'm praying for my friends right now who have Spirits that used to be dormant and now they've manifested and now they have bad habits They can't overcome And I'm praying for their deliverance and their healing tonight Lord I'm praying for anybody here who has picked up witchcraft demons from sorcery wizardry Pharmacia witchcraft using potions and lotions and demonic healing oils I'm praying for them to be delivered tonight and healed Lord I'm praying for any of my friends here tonight who have any ought or bitterness against someone from their past they still think about them and they still have a yucky feeling about that person an ex-wife an ex-husband Stepkids, in laws, somebody hurt them really bad, somebody lied to them, somebody betrayed them, and they have ought in their soul for that person, a negative feeling about them. Lord, I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus for each person here who has ought against themselves. Because that one hurts you the most You love them dearly and they have bad feelings about themselves They don't like themselves. They wish they hadn't been born in that family or this one and They feel Had they been a different person? Somebody else born a different sex, whatever the regret is I Know that hurts you because you love them as they are right now and you have great plans for them. You love them dearly. And you don't want them to be someone else. You have great plans for them. For who they are right now. Lord, I apologize and I pray that you'll forgive me if I offended anybody here tonight or offended anybody on YouTube. I apologize for that. I'm asking you, Lord, to give my friends godly sorrow for when they have hurt you and have not apologized or apologized flippantly or indifferently. I know that didn't help you at all. The Bible says that the Lord is nigh unto those who have a broken heart, and he saves those who have a contrite spirit. And there are some people here who have lost their gift of tears they haven't cried in years they've had a couple of weeping sessions in the last five years but they've never had a holy ghost cry and that's why they can't get healed arrogance pride vanity whatever it is bitterness frustration and anger whatever it is i'm asking you sweet holy spirit cut through that cut through that and give them back their tears because the Bible says you collect all of our tears and you put them in your book You put them in your heavenly book I know you cherish them. I know you cherish them Right now in the name of Jesus every familiar spirit every lust demon every witchcraft spirit every sorcery spirit I place a total curse of failure on you right now I place the curse of failure on you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As soon as any person in this room repents of their sin, you will come out of their brain. You will come out of their body. As soon as they repent, you will come out. As soon as they tell the Lord they're sorry, you will come out. Spirits of infirmity, I curse you in Jesus' name. I bind your power by the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Spirits of infirmity. I bind your power when they repent you will come out of that body You will release that sickness Any spirit that transferred in in a fire tunnel or prayer tunnel or Transferred through a witch's curse or a word curse from a family member a relative a spouse I bind your powers right now. I bind your powers right now We bind you in Jesus holy name. We come against you with the blood of Jesus the Son of God you are going to come out of that body. 
you are going to stop blocking their anointing. You're going to stop blocking their destiny in the name of Jesus. You are going to stop it. You're going to stop it tonight. Father God, I'm asking you now, Holy Spirit, deep conviction come upon my friends so they can be completely healed and completely delivered. Deep conviction right now. Lord, I'll give you a couple minutes to do it. I'll just wait for a couple minutes. I know you need a minute or two to do whatever glorious things you do. Right now, in the name of Jesus, conviction. Conviction. Come down, Lord. Holy Spirit, come down. Conviction. Conviction of sin. Conviction of apathy. Conviction of indifference. Conviction of bitterness and ought. Conviction. I'm asking you right now, Lord, so they can be healed. You cannot be healed or delivered if you have no conviction. Are you sorry for what you did? Will you repent of what you did? Will you do it tonight? Will you turn from it tonight in the name of Jesus? I bind every critical spirit in this room tonight. Every critical nitpicking familiar spirit. Nitpicking doctrine. Nitpicking people's clothes. Nitpicking their mannerism. Nitpicking how they preach or teach. You familiar spirit, you nitpicker. I bind your power. You're blocking my friend's anointing. You're blocking their giftings. Every time they criticize someone or nitpick them, boom, you shut them down. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop it right now. Stop it in Jesus' mighty name. Stop it in Jesus' mighty name. Stop it, I said. Stop doing it. Stop. Every spirit of perversion, I curse you. I bind your power. You come out tonight. Every spirit of perversion. You pervert. You are a pervert. You are putting desires in their body that are not theirs. They do not want them. That's a lie. You're a pervert. Every familiar spirit, every seducing spirit, you put thoughts in their mind that are not theirs. Then you tell them to repent of it and give them guilt and shame. Stop doing that right now. Stop it. Stop it, I said. Stop it. You're using their mind against them. You're playing them. Stop it. Stop it in Jesus' holy name. You are going to loose them tonight. These are God's children, not servants of Satan. In Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. Now I want you to stand up. If anything I said there applies to you, just stand up real quick. We're going to pray for you. You don't need to come down here right now. Just stand up in your chair there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you need to leave, God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for your offerings. Lord bless you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands now. Come on. Oh, God. God, send me Holy Ghost conviction so I can be healed. Give me back my tears, Lord. Give me back my tears. Bitterness and frustration and failure have robbed me of my Holy Spirit tears and my anointing. I'm so sorry. My abusers beat, beat my Holy Spirit tears out of me. I was verbally abused. I was physically abused. And now I'm so hurt and so wounded. I can't forgive them. I can't forgive myself. I can't even weep anymore. I'm so sorry, Lord. Please help me, Jesus. Please help me, Lord. God, have mercy upon my soul. Please help me, Lord. All these people that verbally abused me, all of them, I release in the name of Jesus. All these abusers in the name of Jesus. I want them out of my body in the name of the Lord. I want them out of my body now. Come out of my body right this second. Come out. There they go. Come out right now. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. Ministry team, come forward. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of there in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on out. Come out, I said. Right now, come out right now. Come out right now. Hurry. Get out of my body right now. Come on. Cut out of my body right now. Come out. Right now, you pervert. Right now, you spirit of infirmity. All the ugly men and all the fear spirits that got into my body, I release them right now in Jesus' mighty name. All the fear spirits, go. Come out of me now. Come out of there.
Come out. Be healed. Come out right now. Come out right now. This lady right there. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go in Jesus' holy name. Come out of me. Right now, I said, come out of my body right now. Come out. Come out quick. Get out of my body right now. Every ugly man, my husband's demons, come on out. Right now. Child abuser, come out. Food demons. Food demons, come out. Food demons, come on out. Come out. Quickly come out. Come out right now. Fear. Intimidation. Insecurity. Low self esteem. Come out. Religious demons. Church demons. Come out. Right now. Come out. Come out. The Holy Ghost is here. Come on. Reach out. Spirit of God is moving right now. Come on. Reach out and get it. Reach out and get your miracle. Come out. Come out. Get out of that body. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. I do both of these. Yeah. Come out right now. Come out. Get out of there. Go. Come out. Right now, I said. Get out of that body right now. Every ugly man. Every ugly man that ever touched my body. Everybody that lied to me and betrayed me. Everybody that stabbed me in the back. I command you. Every spirit. Come out of me right now. Come out right now. Grief and sorrow. Come out. Sorrow and misery. Come out of that body. Come out. Let your tears go. Let your tears go. Come out. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Come out. Now. Adultery. Fornication. Pornography. I bind your power. Come out. Come out. Hurry up. Hurry up. Out. Out. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Out. Come out. Go. Come out right now. And just repent of it. Just repent of it. Grab a badge. Grab a badge in there. Come out. Come out, I said. Get out of my body. You stinking pervert. You pervert. Get him out of there. Get him out. Get him out of that body right now. You get him out of there. You've had over a year to develop hatred for them. You've had over a year. Fight back now. Get out of my body. Come out. Come out. Get out. What you need, hon? Lori. Lori, what's going on? Um, I think I have, I just have a lot of fear. My husband is in prison. Your husband is in prison for what? Um, molestation of a child. Of who? Of a child, a neighbor, when he was seven. Neighbor? Okay. Now, your husband had lost demons. How long were you married to him? We've been married for five years. And then how, how long were you married before he molested the neighbor? Oh, this was when he was 17. Was a long time ago. Oh, and then you married him? What do you mean? He's still in prison from 17? No, he, has, he just went to prison like four and a half years ago. Okay, how old is he? He's, he's going to be 51 next month. I lost the time frame there, but anyway, he went to, you haven't seen him for four years. He's been in prison. Right. Right. Okay. What's his name? CJ. Now, 
if he did something when he was 17, why did he go to prison now when he was in his 40s? He was on probation for oh. decades. And then he choked me one night. He was very abusive. Okay. Um, I called the police. He got violated and he went to go serve. What was his first name? Edward. Edward? Okay. Now listen, raise your hands here now. Edward, we have to get rid of Edward. We have to release him to the Lord and let the Lord deal with him. Okay, because you can't help him and you can't fix him. You already tried. You spent a lot of time and a lot of heartache. And you have a good heart. You're a loving person. Okay, and you care. You're a caring person. And the devil pinpoints people like you. He knows you care. He knows you love. And so he picks you up. Okay. Now let's get rid of him. Tonight. Would you be willing to do that? Just turn him over to the Lord. Let him go. And let's get his spirits out of there. Okay. Raise your hand. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Big breath. There you go. Edward. In the name of Jesus Christ. We forgive you for what you've done. You tried to choke her. That wasn't you choking her. That was a demon. A spirit told you to choke her. Because he wanted her dead. And you obey because you've had spirits since you were a child. Tonight we're releasing you into the hands of the Lord. And we're letting you go. We're releasing you from her soul. She's going to release you. Take a breath and blow. Blow like that. Good, good. Keep blowing. Edward, come out of there right now. Come out. Every transfer spirit from Edward, come out. Food spirit, come out. Low self-esteem and fear, come out. Edward, leave her now. Leave her now. Edward, leave her now. Leave now. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there. I let my husband go. I release my husband now in Jesus' name. I'm going to let him go. Dear Jesus. Say it. Dear Jesus. I'm going to let my husband go tonight. Am I giving to you? Because I know you love him. And I know you'll take care of him. I cannot take care of him. I cannot heal him. I need to be healed. I'm hurt and I'm wounded because my love was shoved back in my face. I was betrayed and stabbed in the back. And the devil took advantage of my loving soul. And in addition to that, I said and did some things that were sinful that I should have never done. And I know I hurt you, Lord. And I gave the devil place in my life. And I'm going to repent of it right now. I'm going to repent of it right now. In Jesus' name, I repent of it. And I command my husband's spirits to come out of me. Say that. Get out of my body right now. Come on. Come out of there right now. Come out of my body. Come out of my womb. Come out of my genitals. Come out of my chest. Come on out. Right now. Come out. The demon that tried to choke me, the demon of fear, come out of my spine. Come out of my coccyx. Come out of my neck. Come out of my body. Say it. Come out of my body right now. All my husband's spirits from his childhood to this moment must leave me now. They must leave me now. Come out of me. I am not no longer my brother's keeper. Go. Go now. Go now, I said. Go. Go. Using food as a comfort instead of the Holy Spirit. I command you to come out of me right now. I renounce that trick of the devil. Come out right this second. You speak in tongues. You want to? You do? 
Yeah. All right, you should pray after me. Ready? Koraba, Koraba, Korashia, Mango Samba, Elo Shabibe, Boyamata. You notice that you were saying that pretty easy? Did you notice I was using different syllables, short syllables, different ones? You notice that? Okay. Did you sense or feel anything when I was doing that? Did you feel him? Just easy, you know what I mean? Felt easy? Oh, that's a good sign. Okay, ready? Let's try it again, only this time you add some syllables on your own. Mixed in with mine. And since there's no wrong answer, any syllable is good. Any syllable. Okay, ready? Koraba. Velo Shabiba. Bondo Shandarabata. Yakuramai. Bondarashide. Velo Vasata. Ola Mashibe, help her Lord. Kelo Vashata. Ore Mashibege. Elo Mashandorava. Jesus, I love you. Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord. Tell him you love you. Hey, and who abused you when you were little? My sister. What, what's her name? What, what's she do to you? What's she do to you? My sister trapped me in a room. She abused me verbally for always. Is she an older sister? 18 months older. So is she oh, jealous she of you? Very much so. Okay. Very What's her name? So. Jean. Jean, okay. You know, she, uh, to this day, she, I just seen her recently, and she absolutely the hatred and the violence out of her. She's just talking to her. Yeah. And I, I love her. And I love her. Yeah, I know you she do. She trapped me in a room. Yeah, I know. She allowed boys now, to do things to her. Now, uh, something happened to your sister that you're not aware of. I, I think I know that she was a bed wetter. And uh, it was when she was real little. I'll yeah. be a baby. Now, your sister picked up demons and they told her to hurt you. When I was two months old, I had to, my grandmother had to take me. She was so abusive to me. The demons told her to do that so that you would pick up spirits. She's a soul tormented. Yeah. She's sickly and tormented. She's a type 1 diabetic mother. The demons are slowly killing her now, but yes, it wasn't are. your sister. I know. They're doing it, and they did it so you would have bad feelings about her. <laughs> and you're going to release your sister right now. Take a big breath. Her name was Jean. Yes. Go ahead, breathe. Jean, in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, keep breathing. I'll pray. Keep breathing. Jean, we release you to the Lord. We forgive you for what you've done. We know it wasn't you. That you were abused. And you were infected with spirits. And they told you to hurt your sister. Now Jean, right now, wherever you are, in Jesus' mighty name, be forgiven. Be forgiven. Lord, I want you to go find Jean and hunt her down and put your hands on her. Tell her you love her. Yes. Tell her you understand she was abused. You understand why she was jealous of her sister. And we are forgiving her. Now, Jean, I want all your demons right now to come out of that body right this second. Keep breathing. Come out of her. Jean, come out. Come out of her lungs. Come out. Fear demons. Locked in that room. Fear of dark. Fear of others. Fear of man. Fear of dying. Fear of being hurt. Come out. Come on out, Jean. Come out of her. Come out of her. Misery and sorrow from Jean. Go. In the name of Jesus, go. Come on out. Jean, I command you to leave. Your sister right now, leave her. Leave your sister right now. Come out. Come out of her stomach. Bitterness. Anger. Frustration. Hopelessness. Sadness. Come out. Come out. Spirit, leave these legs. Leave these legs. Leave. Jean, come out of that body. Come out of her spine. Come out. 
Tears, come out. Go. Go. Cursing and swearing. Hatred. Physical abuse. The closet. Go. Come out. Come out of there. Heal. 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 Lift up your feet. Can you go like that? What? Can you do that? Can you normally do that? This side, the left side's weak. Uh, was diagnosed um, with two herniated discs pressing on a root root. Well, two herniated discs where? L, L what? L4 and L5. Okay. Are they still herniated right now? Heal. Yes. Heal, Lord. Are they still herniated? Check them. Are they still herniated? Sciatic nerve is still pain. Is that still there? Okay. Now, other than your sister, who else really hurt you? My ex husband. What's his name? Joe. What did he do to you? Just get a lot of rejection. Judging. Verbal? Verbal. No, that's not Was he physically? No, he was passive aggressive. No, he didn't like you. He withdrew from you. What was his name? Joe? Okay, ready? Let's go. Breathe. Breathe. Father, I want you to do the same thing with Joe. You did with Gene. Hunt him down and forgive him. I know he had spirits of anger. I know he had spirits of rejection. And he rejected her. If she needed a husband that would love her and care for her, and he did not come through. The devil told him to stop it. So she would be hurt. Now, Joe, come out. Come on out, Joe. Right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. I let my husband go. I let my sister go. I have to. I let them go now. Heal. Joe, come out. Come out, Joe. I forgive my husband. I let him go. Come out. All the grief and sadness and sorrow he poured into my soul. I turn it over to Jesus. I let my tears go. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Joe, come out. Joe, come out of there. Joe, come out of back. Come out of her back right now. Come out of that back. Come out. All the curses from Jean and Joe. Come out. All the curses. Jean, Joe, Ed. Come out. Come out of there. Joe, come out of there right now. Get out of her back. Spirit of infirmity, come out of that body. Come out right now. Go. Go now. Come out of that body. Joe, come out of there right now. The hatred I had for him because of his abuse, I repent of it. I want to out now. Go. Hating Joe. Hating Gene. Wishing I was dead. Wishing I was dead. Oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, forgive me. Heal. Heal. Joe, you be forgiven right now. Now be healed. Now be healed. You have to let your abusive relatives go. They have to come out of here now. I give them to you, Lord. I put them on the cross of Calvary. All the ought, all the negative feelings, come out of my back. Come out. Sciatica. Heal. 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 Lord, recreative mercy on Joe and Jean, wherever they are, be healed. What's this thing? What are these things? 
What's that? What's that? WWJD. What's this one? I have no idea. I got it at a gift shop. Sterling got that at a gift shop? I got it at a gift show. I had a store. And I sold jewelry. Take that off. Take that off. What's this thing? Um, that's a sterling silver. I got that at What's a... What's that um, tattoo? That's Luke. What is that? It's uh, Consider the Lilies. Consider what? Consider the Lilies. Lilies? Yeah. What's this? Saint. Saint? Saint. Did you used to be Catholic? No, not at all. Huh? Not at all. No. Why did you put that saying on? Cross cross. What's that thing? Uh, it's a it's a long story. What's this thing? This one here is Zoe International. Zoe, what's that? It's um the girls that were they were rescued from uh, sex trafficking and they make they make. What's this one? Um, another one from the Sterling Silver Gift Show. This is my father's watch. Your dad's Don't watch? Work. Did he abuse you? Not at all. My father was, was he a good guy. Where's Where this me. thing? Um, all from the gift show. All from my store. Your store? Okay. I had a store. All right. That went under. You got any other tattoos on you? Yes, I do. Both scriptures. Scriptures back there? Yeah. So okay. Um, um, Prof, no. Huh? I can't even remember. Jeremiah 29. I just, it's written right here. Jeremiah 29, 11. And then the other one below it is Romans 8, 38, 39. Okay. Now, Lord, if any of these pieces of jewelry she doesn't know the history of, Thank you. any of these pieces of jewelry, if these things are causing this healing to be blocked, we renounce this curse placed upon her. Any verbal curses from Joe or Jean? My children. My and children the children. The children. The children's usually hurt more than the spouses. God have mercy upon these kids. They brought a curse on themselves when they cursed their mother. But we are going to forgive them and let these terrible wounds go from her ex-husband, her abusive sister, her children. Come on, let your tears go. We got to get these wounds out of there for you to be healed. Okay? Heal. Come on. Get out of there. YouTubers, listen to me. You got to forgive these people or you're not going to get delivered. Okay? Now, many of you have had really bad spouses, rotten kids, terrible parents. Okay? That's true. They were rotten. They were no good. I get that. Everybody gets that. But, but, if you have any bad feelings for those people, it's going to block your deliverance. They were at fault. Okay. Nobody's excusing them for what they did. But, the Lord says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will recompense, not you. Not us. So you must release your sick relatives from your soul. You got to release them to the Lord. Let's do that now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I was abused when I was young. I was abused as a kid. And I'm asking you to forgive them if they're dead. I want you to remove the soul wounds out of my body and the demons they put into my body from abusing me. I ask you right now, Lord, release me from their curses, for I bless them. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Come on now. Just pray for them and forgive them. My friend Sierra, come here, sit down right here. So, 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 what's happening is, is, is right, right now. I mean, she, she used meth today, and she wants to get off of it. She wants to stop, um, but she has some, you know, there's some powerful drug demons inside of her right now. So, yeah, but that's not our problem. No, it's not. That's not our problem. <laughs> I don't know, you, you talked to me earlier about, you know, unfamiliar or hey, people. Can I talk to you again? Yeah. Yeah. Now, who hurt you when you were young? Little, huh? yeah. When you were little, who hurt you? My brother, like, mo molested me or... Was he your older brother? Yeah, he took my virginity. What's he? 
Was he fondling you or having intercourse? Cool. Okay. And how old were you? I think I was like 12 or 13 or something. Yeah. Now, what's your brother's name? First name. Um, see, I, I don't, I don't want to like cast out all these demons until I, I, I just get. You asked me a question today. It was a really good one. You said, where do I start casting them out? And, and, and uh, you were right, remember? I said you were right. It was your brother. You started the slide after your brother molested. Or it could have been earlier. What happened earlier? When... When um, my dad, he, he started this whole like meditation thing and what meditation? What kind was it? Where I could pull, he and I practiced both of us pulling numbers out of each other's mind. Okay, now how old were you then? Um, I, I was like ten or eleven. Okay, so a familiar spirit got in at ten or eleven. Now let's go before that. Before ten or eleven, did anything happen to you? I can't remember. Okay, so from 10 is when it started. Right? And it was your dad that did it. Where's your dad now? He is addicted to meth and heroin and addicted to alcohol in his condemned house, living in his backyard. Yeah. Now the demons. Yeah, the demons took your dad. Okay, and they're going to kill him. We know that. Now, no, not for sure. If if we can get you delivered here, we got a shot at your dad. Okay. Now, it was at age ten. Your dad's name is Brian. Ryan and your Brian. Brian and your brother's name is Jesse. Jesse. Okay, sit back in the chair there. So you can pray over me. Yeah. Have a seat. Scoot back. But I also have, I don't know, there's, there's just a, there's a whole lot. Yeah, I know there is. There's a whole lot. But meth isn't our problem. You're, you're using meth to cover up these scars in your soul. Meth, meth is only a symptom. But that's only like a handful. Or, okay, What's a so handful? We're just, we're just focusing on the, the things that first started. Yes, okay. exactly. Let's just start at the beginning. Okay, so since I am being, since I got a demon of mind control. Yeah, with your dad. When I was 10, right now, why can't I, why can't, I'm sorry, I know you're tired. Why can't what? I remember anything before that? Probably because I have mind control. Well, they blocked it. Right? Now that's easy. So, so what if, what if um, another demon came into me before that? Like that, well, that's why I was asking those questions. I was trying to figure out if one got in before you were 10. Uh -huh. Okay. So we, you can't remember. Okay. So grace will cover it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're a very, very loved person. You're a beautiful woman as well. Yeah. And you're intelligent. So what do, okay, also, why don't you find any of the spirits that left all the the when, when, after you're done with everything, after you're done casting demons out, don't you have to find them up and send them to pit of hell? No, no, you don't do that. Why not? Huh? Lean back. Why? The, the demons are tricking you into going into deliverance. It's in your, it's, it's him. Okay, you're being tricked in it right now. Okay, just listen to me. You're being tricked again. Uh, we got to get the thing when you were 10. Let's go get him. That'll be the strong. Remember, I told you we got to get the strong man out. And the strong yeah. man is so yeah. the drug use is just a symptom of, of what happened, what happened early on. And you're suppressing those emotions by using drugs. But I think that it's so you got abused by your dad. That happened at an early age. But we want to find out if there's something prior to that so that we can work on that as well. You know what I mean? So the thing is, is that we got to we got to take it one at a time. What's that? A moment. Yeah. What's going on? Big He's, uh, his mom gave him up to Satan at birth. He's had Buddhism, Hinduism, witchcraft throughout his life. How's your, wife doing? How's your wife doing? 
She's doing good. <laughs> She's doing good. Did you ever get your tears? Did you ever get your tears? Huh? I've not been able to cry. All the sins. All now, the. Here's what I did one time with a guy like you. This guy is like completely corked. Yeah, I see that. Uh, you can and feel it. And sometimes what I've had these breaks. Sometimes if you uh, get them to do this. God, Lord, Lord, help me, Father, save me, help. Try it. Now, how are we doing here? Um, we're doing all right. We're doing okay. I mean, she, she, like I said, she, she has, she, her mind's racing. Yeah. They so, get yeah, drugs, yeah. Plus, she's got brain demons because she's smart. Yeah. Plus, she's street smart. She can read people like books. Right. 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 Yeah. So, so here's what we got to do. Uh, when you're not on drugs, why don't you come in for a counseling appointment? Yeah, that's and we'll start from the beginning on. together. Let's do it. There's no, and it's free. There's no charge. What, what, her, what her concern is? is yeah, she's gonna go and use. Again. Yeah, she will. No, no, that's up to you. You're gonna have to make that judgment yourself. You're pretty street smart. Yeah, you got a reference there. I can tell you this. But you're pretty smart. You read people quick. So you Hey, brother. How you doing? Love you. God bless you. All right, YouTubers, YouTubers, listen to me now.